I'm Jamie Glasgow. I'm director of science for Wild Fish Conservancy. We're standing out here on Green Cove Creek in Thurston County, Washington. It's the day before Thanksgiving and we're surrounded by chum salmon that are trying to move upstream to spawn. We're about seven tenths of a mile from the salt water in this small stream. And unfortunately, this is the end of the road for these fish. The culvert behind me is one that has been a partial barrier to fish passage for several decades. The culvert started to fail on its own, such that uh, Thurston County had to come in uh, last month and do a, an, an emergency repair to prevent the road from failing. Unfortunately, the emergency repair involved sticking a tube through the existing culvert which creates a situation uh, where fish cannot pass through this culvert anymore. That means that all the chum salmon that are returning to spawn in this small watershed are stuck within the downstream most seven tenths of a mile of this watershed. This year, the first year that they no longer can access the upstream habitat at all, uh, is the largest return of chum salmon to this watershed on record. The State Department of Fish and Wildlife performed a spawning survey here yesterday and counted over 1,100 chum salmon and some coho salmon as well that are in this lower seven-tenths of a mile of this watershed. Normally these fish would spread throughout this larger watershed and utilize spawning habitat and their offspring would use rearing habitat further upstream. But unfortunately these fish are stuck on the downstream side of this crossing because of the emergency repair that Thurston County constructed earlier this fall. Before the slip lining process, some chum salmon were able to get past this crossing every single year. This year, with the slip line in place, we haven't seen a single chum salmon on the upstream side of this culvert. And there's uh, over a mile and a half of spawning and rearing habitat up there that's being blocked by this structure now. It's going to be fish that are spawning on top of each other, and they're building reds that excavate out or superimpose on other reds. And that means there's going to be a lot of eggs, fertilized eggs, that will not survive down here because there is such a high density of salmon because they are unable to access the rest of their spawning habitat further upstream. As we look upstream at this location, uh, we're standing in a stream channel. We're in a ravine and there's this mountain of material behind me which is the road crossing. The road is running across the top of this hill. I'm amazed to think about engineers looking at a ravine like this one with a healthy stream in it and saying, let's build a road across it. Um, but it's exactly what we used to do and, uh, and it, it still happens. I'm cautiously optimistic that we will not continue to make the same mistakes that have been made over and over when it comes to stream crossings. I also see some incredible opportunities uh, from a cost savings perspective. Replacing this undersized culvert with a larger one and then putting all the fill back into this valley where it never belonged in the first place is an extremely expensive endeavor. Uh, it would be much more cost effective and much more sustainable over time to remove this culvert and the fill and replace it with a footbridge, not bringing the fill back and allowing the natural processes that occur in streams and rivers to occur through this reach. There are a lot of folks who are very hopeful that Thurston County, who owns this challenge, will seriously consider an innovative and progressive alternative to the status quo.